So this is my loved ones, the last Sunday of the church year. We close out the calendar on God's timing as his people, and we are starting this process of moving toward not only the season of Advent, but the celebration of the birth of our Savior before we get there, though. This is the last Sunday of the church year. It has been known for generations also as Christ the King Sunday. It is, and you can tell by our hymnody this morning, and probably through the readings too, it is this, this Sunday where we stop before we step into the season of Advent, and we, we acknowledge and listen to the Word and acknowledge that this, this Christ that we belong to, this Jesus that we know as Savior, is indeed King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that in the course, in the, in the course of history and of our lives, He is already at this time ruling and reigning, not only His church, but all of His creation, we say that today in church, and I, I find it such an interesting irony in our lives that for most of us, and really most of the time, out in the normalness of our world, that reality, that reality that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords is, is rather in some ways distant from us. As we watch the unfolding of our world and our own lives and all the verities and vagaries that take place, the high ones and the low ones and all those in between, it can become for us as Christians almost unimaginable that what we speak in church is actually true out in the world. This morning we, we give this musical language the, the voice of our lips and our hearts and our minds. Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We sing about it and pray about it. We'll preach about it this morning. And yet it is absolutely true that out in the world that reality, that, that biblical reality, that truth that we live our lives on as people of the kingdom is not nearly so apparent. You probably noticed, I hope you noticed this morning, that the gospel reading seemed odd. Here at the end of the church here, before we go into Advent, all of a sudden we're reading about Christ's crucifixion, his time on the cross, at least a small part of it. And doesn't that seem odd? Well, I want you to hear this morning as we lead, he leads us into the teaching today, loved ones, that it's really not odd at all. The people who stood by the cross, believers and unbelievers, but especially believers, were struggling with this very thing that how can, how can this one who is dying on the cross be the king? How is it possible that he who is dying broken and bleeding, seemingly out of control, being taken by ones who choose to take him and take his life. How can this one, how can this one be the king? And so the same malady that struck them and they struggled with this, how can he be king of kings and lord of lords? We look at our lives, we see how it unfolds, and it seems that anything but that is the truth. And yet we are reminded today in powerful and wondrous ways that this Jesus you and I belong to, he is king of kings, and Lord of Lords. This morning what I share with you from the scriptures is not so much about prescription for our lives as it is a remindful and powerful description of the one we belong to. You heard it just a few moments ago. I invite you, I ask you to set aside your papers and your watches and your distractions. And I want you, loved ones, to listen this morning again with your minds and your hearts to this description of the Jesus, this King of Kings and Lord of Lords that you and I belong to. Paul writes... Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything, listen, in everything, he might be preeminent. It all, loved ones, it all hinges on him. All that we see, all that we are, all that will come to be, all that lies ahead, all of it. So listen. This is who the Bible tells us Jesus is. We're told this morning as his people that he is the creator and sustainer. In other words, he is the author of all that we see. When you open up the scriptures and we read in Genesis chapter 1 that he spoke, let there be light and there was light in all the rest of creation, I want you to know this morning, loved ones, that was the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. 
Every star, every tree, the sun and the moon, every ocean, every river, every lake, every mountain and every valley, every child, every single animal, think of this, all of it are a product of His will and His word. He's the creator. He's the author. And Paul says, and this is a remarkable thing for us and good for our hearts, he is also the one who holds it all together. Or to give it to you in a negative sense so you hear it clearly, if this Jesus, by the power of his word and the greatness of his presence, did not speak and hold up his hand, this creation that you and I are part of would fly apart. It would come apart at the seams. It is a remarkable word that we can pass over so easily. Listen to it. All things are held together by Him. I got dressed this morning, stepped out into the cold, drove my car down Nicholasville Road, and the sun's coming up. Oh man, it was a pretty sunrise. Just coming up in the east, just breaking across, kind of red and just glorious, and it's crisp and cold outside. I want you to hear this. And then it occurred to me, because I knew this was coming. You know, Jim, that sun is only coming up because Jesus bids it to come up. And it's going to go down tonight because he bids it to set. And the tides will come in and they will go out. And the breezes will blow and the, and the rains will come. And eventually the snows, it will be cold and it will be warm. It will be all the things that his creation is bound to be. And listen to me. And all of that continues to turn and, and operate and function because he holds it together. In fact, Paul says something really remarkable to us this morning. He says that all of creation exists for Him, for His glory, for His holy purposes. Isn't it our arrogance? Isn't it our absolute arrogance that we plant our flag? We put our name on it. We put our arms around it. We claim it's ours. We treat it like it's ours. We think it's ours. We think we have ownership. And the Bible teaches us something Christians completely different. Jesus, this creation, was created and exists for Him. We get that sneaky little word. We're stewards. You know that sneaky little word? He places it in our hands and into our lives to take care of and, and to, to manage and to watch over and to be part of his glorious work. But let's not get this, let's not get this wrong. Let's not mistake this, loved ones. All of creation exists for him. Now let's narrow the scope. Listen. We're also told that Jesus is the preeminent one. That is, he is the head of his body that we know of as the church. He is its creator. This morning, and I, this just boggles my mind when I say it out loud, it really boggles my mind. But think with me. Across the world today, in a world of 7 billion people, we estimate as best as we can that some 3 to 3.5 three billion of them are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, are Christians. They're black and they're white and they're red and they're yellow. They speak Swahili and German and French and Italian and, and English. They, they speak some Spanish and all kinds of languages we've never heard of and some will never know. They are tall and they are short. They are poor and they are rich. They are people of the kingdom. They are the body of Christ. And every single one of them in every place across the globe today were chosen by him and recreated by Jesus to be part of his body. Here in our little St. John's Lutheran Church, we worship this morning. Yes, we do. Can I hear an amen? amen. Let's try that again. We worship this morning as the body of Christ. Yes, we do. Can I hear an amen? amen? Yes, we do. But we are, so you hear this, we are just one little island in this great big body of Christ. He has redeemed it with his blood. He has healed it with his blood. He continues to strengthen it with his blood. And so we're absolutely clear about this because it's so important for us. He is, Paul says, he is the firstborn. He is the first fruits, the first one to come alive again. And he's going to lead this procession all the way to eternity because he lives. His body, the church, will live too. Every piece of it. 
every part of it, following him, this first fruits of the resurrection, all the way to eternity. This great big body of Christ, this preeminent Jesus, this one who is the leader, the first of all things. Now let's narrow the scope. Listen. And for each one of us here today, who Jesus is gives us such hope and such assurance. You see, we are each his creation. Every molecule, every piece of DNA that makes up you and me are, are part of the voice of this creating God that we know as Savior. He put us together. He chose us. He, he, he made each one of us intricately and intimately and uniquely. Every single one of us. We, we look today, never mind the effects of sin, we look today like we look because this is what Jesus chose for us. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We are unique creations. We're his creation. We're not here because an ape turned into a man. We're not here because we climbed out of the slime. We're not here because there was a big bang and whoops. We're here because the God who created that creation, whose name is Jesus, also created each and every single one of us. Think how special that makes us. This morning I want you to know, too, loved ones, we are his recreation. These perfect ones who became imperfect through the sin that is part of our lives. He came and with his life and by his blood made whole again. We are, Paul says, we are his new creations. I love that. The older I get, the more I like it. We're his new creations. We are whole inside by his blood. We are redeemed outside by his blood. We are heaven bound through his blood. We are his new creations. You are. I am. And today, listen, today we are held by him. Each and every one of us, we are held in his hands and close to his heart. We are held in such a loving and grace-filled way that we can be absolutely certain he'll never let us go. He'll never let us wander. He'll never let us get lost. He'll never let us sin our way out of the kingdom. We are his beloved children, bought and paid for in the blood. And he holds us in his arms, close to his heart. And this kind Jesus, he sustains every one of his children. Through all the things we go through in our lives, the ups and the downs, the hard places, the ones that cause us tears and fears, that make us anxious, he is there. He's taking care of his children. You can bet your boots. He's providing the grace that we need to walk down the road he's placed us on. He's providing the food and the shelter and the loved ones around us. He's providing all the things we need for heart and soul and life. He is sustaining his children one by one, life by life, out of love, always. I have a thousand questions. Why do you make it like this? Why does it look like that? How come I can't walk anymore? Why is my body wearing out? Why is the time passing so fast? Why does it look like this? And the answer to every one of those is this squeeze to his heart, this promise to care for, this perfect providential will of this great Savior who always cares for his children and listen, and who will make sure that we're on that eternal procession that he is leading to eternity. You are. I am. He lives. We will live. Who Jesus is. For each one of us loved ones, well, he's the source of our hope in time and for eternity. He's the one who gives us strength and peace. He's the refuge of our lives. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is our Savior. And we praise him. On this Sunday morning, this is the teaching of the Lord.
you would rise, please.